buying and exist uh, before that is there any question that you want to ask anything before we start no all right so kita start dengan buying an existing uh, business okay so as we all know in spite of uh, investment uh, activity okay say you want to buy another company you know what are you looking for okay um what's the advantages and disadvantages of buying an existing uh, business okay um so we go with this uh, advantage first uh, because it's quite important for you to make a decision when it comes to um uh, investing in 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 another uh, ventures okay so the first one is the by buying a new sorry buying a existing business basically that business is basically successful okay so you can just like continue okay um everything is in place uh in terms of manpower in terms of business in terms of client and you, it might also uh in terms of networking as well okay um then we have this um another advantage is we are basically leveraging the experience of the previous owner okay a good example um like for example uh, season okay semua tahu season you all know season right bakery shop um they sell cakes uh, bread and everything so basically season was previously owned by an investor from singapore okay you open up few branches in malaysia and then after that uh, after two years of operation they sell that business to another person okay so this person they put some protective convenience meaning to say that uh, the original owner of season cannot do any uh, bread making cake house this kind of business for five years then they just simply continue with the names with the you know signature food bread cake and everything just continue with the same manpower with the same uh, brand signage and everything so after five years the pre the original owner uh finished the uh, protective convenient contract then that owner basically opened up a new line of bakery which is uh, uh the one that i think are you quite aware what this is lavender Okay, so basically they use the experience of the previous owner, uh, the supplier and everything. Okay, so it just it's just like a turnkey business. You just need to put in first gear and then you know you just simply drive. Uh, as far as locality is concerned, most of these businesses, uh, they have a very strategic location. Uh, cuma uh, except that maybe some new things you know and the new management maybe they have they they want to have a certain um items uh, special items okay so uh, or maybe a special places so you just simply continue uh every uh, inventory is all in place and um, establish trade credit with the suppliers and everything and it might have a new value because of under new management they might have new ideas new strategies new business model Okay, so buying a business is quite uh, interesting and and give a lot of advantages. But then um, um, you have to be worried because of there are also disadvantage. Okay, um, the first one is the cash requirement, meaning you have to buy. Okay, I have a friend um, in in KL. Uh, his business is actually buying a clinic. Okay, a GP general practice, a clinic. So basically, what he intend to do is that right now at the moment he bought already four. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, first time when he told me about this thing, it doesn't make any sense, lah. Um, you know, clinic like doctors, you know, did, never ever occur into my mind that doctor want to sell their clinic. But actually, doctor is just like a teacher. You know, at one point they want to 
retire. So my friend with its yeah their investors in, in their business angel behind him bought four already bought four clinic okay where they will buy everything they will value the 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 business and also they will ask the doctor when uh this doctor going to retire so from that day until his retirement day they will pay the uh, pay everything they value everything and now the doctor basically work with him okay um uh even even the staff uh, the staff the nurse staff nurse ev- everybody uh, and to to what call it with the the uh, the patient as well okay um so so sometimes they they will um encourage the doctor to stay work okay but then the doctor doesn't need to think about you know I'm um, buying medicine man- managing the business and everything so is is quite interesting um but you need to know how to value because of um when it comes to valuation you need to be very or what call it um precise very you need to know everything because sometimes you know it might occur to this clinic that it, would, it, it doesn't make any money or or the number of patients are going down so we need to be very careful about that thing okay so So that's why so on your on on the entrepreneur side on the doctor side actually maybe the reason for them to uh, sell their business is because of um they already forecast some problems that the new buyer didn't see it okay uh, so that is that the one of the disadvantage but then uh, we are talking about business we're talking about risk so is a is a gambling move um and the idea of my friend is actually basically he, he wanted to have at least like 10 clinics so that they can uh, combine it and um combine the value and then maybe unlock the value in in and and go for ipo so that's the reason why these people uh, one of the reason why um these people want to buy uh, another thing is that if you have a company and you just and and you know when someone d- decide or someone offer you to buy your business um is a good is a good move okay because all people only buy your business when they think that your business have value okay so if you have some problems and then only you decided to to let go of the business um, there's not much choice uh, because of maybe people or investors knew about this thing and and there will be no good offer may be given to you okay so the business is might uh, the business might losing some money okay one of the disadvantage which we as investors we need to identify this thing to the valuation business valuation and then look at the um uh, forecast and everything um you are paying for ill will okay. some of the business it looks good but in reality uh, that was not the case okay current employees maybe some Uh, reluctance or or some grievances with the new management okay since you are new owner or new investors so basically you know you have your own strategy you have your own business model okay the way how to conduct business might not be comfortable among the employees okay so you need to tackle this thing you, uh, especially when it comes to low level workers you know they are, they are a bit more emotional okay um so that's why um it's um beside looking at the financial aspect of the business it also need to look at the human resource um issues obsolete or inefficient equipment analysis yes you might need to buy a new one the one that they have the one that the um the one that they are currently being using maybe it's not as good as or it's not up to date so you need to upgrade or you need to buy a new machine which will cost you money okay but somehow this is all will be included in your business valuation um um yes and the last one is like i said uh, is a challenging uh, for the new management to implement changes to the incumbent to the the, the current workers in current environment and to some extent but uh, in 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 summary betting business buying a business is much more 
um, easier, but it will cost you a lot of money. You know, you just simply continue with the uh, current operation and everything. So if um, if you decided to buy a company, okay, um, you need to go through all these things. And okay, beside doing your financial analysis, forecasting and everything, you have to look at the uh, 360 uh, factors that will affect your business. Okay. So that's why one of the reasons uh, most of this company, when they bought this company, they will um, cut it down into small pieces and then simply sell the business. Okay, there's another case, uh, uh, a case study, quite interesting. Okay, there's one company. Um, uh, this company is basically uh, provide an apps uh, uh, business. Okay, um, we do have a couple of clients, for example, is, is this a simple, is this just as apps, okay, where uh, basically you can put everything there and then um, um, it will notify to the uh, client, to the customers, to those who have their apps. Okay, um, So this company charge about, if I'm not mistaken, 7,000 ringgit for uh, Apple with unlimited push. A notification uh it will seven thousand yeah seven thousand and then uh it will take about one week to set up for apple for ios uh for android it's only like three three days okay so the business is very good so they approach a couple of uh companies for example uh, ducati malaysia so basically in that apps you know ducati can just put their product, their merchandise, and then their activities, like for example, you know, like they will push a notification saying that, okay, this week there will be a convoy going to this place, uh, the rally point will be here. So when you click that thing, it will automatically um, go to the waste uh, application. So all these uh, Ducati owned bikers will, you know, rally there, gather there, and then they will have this convoy. So this, this company is quite Quite, uh, it's, it's a simple business, okay. Um, uh, quite interesting, and and they are at the peak actually. They're making a lot of money, but then when they approached Maybank and Maybank decided to buy this company, so what they did is they just simply sell the uh, company. Uh, so maybe Maybank think that or focus that this company have some values and maybe they can use this kind of services when it comes to expanding their. Uh, current business expanding their um, their customers um, market. Okay, so those are the advantage and disadvantage of buying an existing companies. And then, if yes, this is this is actually this is much more crucial actually when it comes to doing a business with families and friends. Okay, uh, not many uh, family business uh, successful to be frank. Okay. Um, I've read it before, okay, the num the percentage is very low, right? The one that is successful, you know, because of these are the few things that that we need to look into. You know? Because normally we will take for granted it is our family and friends. Okay, so you know, in the beginning everything um everything is okay, smooth chante, and um they are very happy with the business. But when they hit the jackpot or maybe the business expanding, then that's where uh, problems come in. So before that thing to happen, okay, and and I have the experience actually, okay, I have a lot of experience with my family, okay. Um, my wife's side, not my side, okay. My wife's side, my my side is all good. My my wife's side is not not that good, <laughs> no lah. But then um, basically uh. I have some experience, okay, but then uh, at the end of the day, you cannot say much. Eh? You cannot, you know, just because of this business, you you have a fight among your families and members. So in order for you to avoid all this thing, there are a few things that you need to consider, okay, before um, before doing a business with the family members or friends, okay. Friends is quite okay. I think maybe basically, I mean, the worst thing that you can do is that you know you 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 don't be friend with this with, with your partners anymore, or maybe you can you know 
dissolve the the business. Okay, uh, but when it comes to family, it's quite difficult. Okay, especially uh, it comes when it comes to Asian family, we are very clinkish. You know, we have a very strong family structure, not like like the Westerners. Okay. Um, so they 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 are much more liberal and you know, they are much more independent. I can say that. Okay. So the first one is to consider the impact on women on everyone involved. Okay. You got to explain to them. Okay. Uh, here, educate naive investors. Naive investors are all the family members who chip in money. Okay. You have to. You have to educate them. You have to um, see what will happen to the business. Uh, I'm sorry. What happened to the family when the business? You know, if it's successful or if it's not, okay. That I have, I, I actually there's a one company, okay, family business which is very good, okay. Uh, they jewel basically this business they sell fish, okay. Is is like like a not a coral fish, but then it's just a, I don't know in 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 English word, but then this fish you can see, um. Basically, in in kampung near Parit, uh, near all this small small river, it can matelalat. Okay, it's basically it's a very small fish. But then this company, okay, managed to go for IPO in Singapore Stock Exchange. Okay, can you imagine that? Okay, a small business. Okay, this small is a family business. It's run by his uh, their their youngest uh, family members, uh, youngest brothers, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, all the big brothers they simply give the money, put some money in the business. The youngest is the one who run that business, and they managed to go for um, uh, IPO in stock uh, in Singapore Stock Exchange. Okay, so their 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 motto is like uh, if you um, is only if it's only one fish is you are very vulnerable. We are very. It's, it's very dangerous. When you have a school of fish, then you uh, become stronger. Okay. So what they did is basically. Um, but this is something got to do with. It is a family business, but then this is how they they build up their business so that they can go for uh, uh, IPO. They, they can unlock the value and and list it in Singapore Stock Exchange. What happened is that when we study about this company's business model, it seems that their business model is normal. Okay. Um. It's it's just like any other businesses. Okay. We will have your own customers and everything. Blah blah blah. But one interesting fact about this business is that, um, they do it by themselves. Everything. Uh, they buy everything. They they make like, uh, fish food, the tanks, everything. But when we check again, when we scrutinize this business, we look in deep. Deep, deeply in, into this business, we find out that actually this company started by selling, um, like this exotic uh, fish, um, like this uh, goldfish, you know, um, this flower horn, uh, few fish. But then, what happened to that when they have problems, they have this uh, this disease. Okay, so they they sustained a huge loss, and then they decided to go and sell this. Fish, this small small fish where you can get easily from parit parit from sungai ikan matelalat is basically the one that you use to keep um, the what do you call it uh, mosquitoes from breeding and everything. You put all this fish in in big tank so that they can eat all this um, uh, um, all this uh, uh, mosquitoes egg and everything. So when we look at it, we find out that. Let's say how how they they come up with the value, eh? How how they can they can uh, build up their their business value. What they did is that like uh, when they sell, for example, eh? okay, a normal business uh, activities is that when someone wants to buy this fish, they will put in the plastic bag, and then and then they need to have tanks, and and sometimes they have to put some oxygen and everything, and and also the fish food. What happened is that. Normally they will go and buy from the supplier. Uh, we talk about we talk about about food fish, yeah, right? Um, uh, so let's say you have one supplier selling you, let's uh, I, maybe, um, one say one bucket of uh, food fish food uh, for a price of one dollar and fifty cent. Okay, so you this is normally uh, what 
uh, business uh, will do, they will buy. Okay, buy from the supplier, $1.50. And then later on, along the way, you manage to find another supplier who sells uh, $1 per bucket. So definitely, in a normal business, you will change, you will go and buy from this supplier. Okay. But this was not the case for this company. What happened is that <clears throat> he approached to that one dollar and fifty cent business, tell them that they want to be a partner with their their business, and they they are part of the uh, company. Okay, so he said that okay, the deal is that if I'm not mistaken, okay, if I'm not mistaken, the deal is that whatever sales that you made, thirty percent will go back to the to this company. So, so, and then this company also, whatever they do, the bis- whatever business they make, okay, that plastic bag company, the supplier will get 30% from them. So basically, they, they create a loop, a circle, okay? And then it goes to all the things that related to the business, including the tanks, the, you know, the place and everything, the food, the food, uh, how they breathe, um, and then, um, Everything, okay, um, the worm and everything, uh, uh, okay, they all make sure that these suppliers basically become their partners. They, they do some joint venture. So the value of the business is growing enormously, okay? And you get to understand that these suppliers, they have their own customers. So they knew that whatever the supplier, um, I mean, um, they sell to someone else, the fish company, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the name of this, I uh, can't remember the name of this company. Um, this fish company will get 30%. Even to that extent, when this company bought, what do call it, uh, uh, $1.50 plus uh, fish food, okay? Um, he knew that from that $1.50, 30% will go into this, this account into the business. So they create a very, what do you call it, a, 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 a value there between the fish company with the supplier. Okay? So that is the reason. Within, I think if I'm mistaken, within five years, they managed to go for IPO. They managed to expand their business, expand their value, okay, increase their value, expand their business, and manage to go for, is if I'm not mistaken, it's about 200 million uh, a net worth of this company. So imagine a small, a company who sells small fish, a fish which is not not even exotic. You can s- simply find it anywhere. Okay, if you go outside of your house, go to any long tang or any train or any sungai or pagit whatsoever, you can see this fish. Basically, they sell this. All right. So so that's how they they do. Okay. So when it comes to this uh, family business. You need to consider the, another company is another company uh, similar to this is uh, in Singapore also. They sell curry puff, curry puff, curry puff lah. In Malaysia kita pakai curry puff, right? Okay, come on. Uh, in Malaysia we've been selling curry puff since Independence Day, but none of the company who sell curry puff go for uh, IPO or, or listed in the in the stock exchange. But this company managed to do so. The same model, okay. The dough, the flour, everything becomes their partners because it becomes their, 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 their part of their business. So basically, they have a big value. And then they have a few, uh, what do you call it, um, chain of stores. Okay? Once, once they have a big value, okay, um, they start to expand their business. We need, to, we need to think about our business model right now. And we need to, we need to re- do some thinking of how business model is going to be. Right? It's not just because it's an, it's an evidence. Um, that there's already, already an evidence to show that um, the product is not really that important. The way how you conduct the business, how you do the business model is most important. Okay, So you need to consider, you need to tell your family members and friends the impact of the investment on everyone, uh, on, on whoever involved in the business. Okay, if the business is going like this, what will happen to you guys? What will happen to us? If this business 
successful, what will happen to us? What you need to do and everything. Okay, keep the arrangement strictly business. Better for you to create a written contract. Uh, I think point number one, two, three, four, five. Eh? Create a written contract. Because family members sometimes they need they take for granted. Okay. I always take for granted. And then at the end of the day, nothing come back. Okay. Especially when I do when my my, my daughter wanted to, you know, do some uh, from uh, using online okay uh, I always the one who give capital but then until today not even a single cent uh, I get back from all this business okay um they the um, one of my daughter basically um, she um baked some cookies okay they was during the school time okay so she she told me that okay this is the price and this is how much money you're gonna get but you know uh, I can only enjoy the smell and maybe it tastes like few cookies and then, and that's all. Okay, with the money that I put uh, pour into this business, these so called business ventures. Okay, it doesn't make uh, you know I I didn't get anything to be frank. The ROI is basically zero, and in fact I have to top up more. Okay, I have to give more. Okay. And uh, then I have to send, I have to go to the post office, you know, I have to pack everything, packaging, buy boxes and everything. So, so doing business with family, you get to be very careful. Okay. So you need to have a clear, you know, arrangement between you and your family. So one way is that you create a written contract. Okay. Tell them that this is the amount of money you're going to put and this, this money, this is what I'm going to do. And this is the amount of money that you will receive. You're not good. It seems like they are very naive, okay? Meaning to say that they think that, okay, um, I put you, I give you 10,000 today, uh, hopefully by one month, I can back up my money. There's no such thing as that. Okay? It's not as simple as it look. okay? So you have to educate them, okay? Uh, so that's why they said, it keep the arrangement strictly business. You tell, okay, if you run the business, then you should have a salary, uh, instead of shares, in, uh, profit, okay, you can simply use profit. No, basically you need to have uh, a salary, a fixed salaries, okay. Uh, you have to decide among your family members, okay. Since you are the one who's going to run the business, you are going to run, okay. Everybody agree that you should have this certain amount of uh, uh, salary. And then it's much more easier. Uh, rather than whatever profit you have, whatever profit that you make, okay, when you, when you get your profit, you start uh, dividing among your families, and that that is quite dangerous, actually. Okay, there's no specific because um, people might claim that oh, you're not doing business very good. You are doing this. You're you're spending lavishly. You are you're buying unnecessary things. You know that kind of thing. So you need to have all this um, uh, arrangement clearly before you start. Okay, so settle the detail upfront. How much money is involved? You need to tell them. Okay, and like I said just now, this is the amount of money they're going to put in. This is what you're going to get. When are you going to get? How are you going to get? Everything should be written in the contract. So that it will give them some ideas. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, and then treat the money as bridge finance. If you think that you want to go alone with this company, okay, with this business, from capital from your family members, you have to treat the money as a bridge finance. Meaning to say, you have to use wisely, okay, efficiently, okay, um, very productive in terms of, of your uh, business. And then after that, when your business is stable, then you go with a proper financing, okay, which is either you go to the bank to get some loans and everything. So um, to treat this money as a bridge finance, it's not like your main capital. It's just you should have your own capital, okay. And remember packing order theory? talk about this okay um so you need to uh have all this in in your mind okay uh develop a payment schedule that suit both the employer and the i just don't want that very difficult for you to explain okay um if your family members are educated okay uh, then it's easy but if your family members are not really educated in terms of business doing business then then um you need to clear everything before you start the business, okay? So you have to show that, okay, if this time, uh, this amount of money, 
um, uh, you're going to point in in my business. Okay, this is the payment schedule that you're going to get uh, until you until until cover everything. So if you have to have like a lot of scenario analysis, okay, uh, where if this thing happen, what will happen to your business? If this this thing happen, if you have this kind of this much of uh, profit, this is what happen. This is what you're going to get. We have this amount of profit. This is what you're going to get. No, so you have to, to, to what do you call it, um, uh, to clear off this thing. Another good reason, uh, uh, sorry, another good case study about this thing is, uh, I don't know whether you you aware or not. Um, there's a in in Tamanyu we have uh, a kopitiam, a chame chame kopitiam. Okay, just like uh, old town. Okay, so actually this company uh, owned by. Uh, two brothers, okay, the elders and the second one. So basically, money comes from the elders, elder brother. He put a lot of money, okay, and then his brother only like chip in only like ten percent or five percent uh, of the val- business value because of um, because of his family family business. So the elders brother, you know, when it comes to your younger brothers and myself, is quite difficult for you to be very strict. So what he said was like, all right, we split the profit 50-50, even though his uh, second brother, you know, chip only a fraction, only a few small percentage of capital into the business. But then when the business um, expand, explode, okay, making a lot of money, <laughs> nothing, I mean, his second brother is very, uh, uh, untung lah, eh? uh, lucky for him uh, because of we only put a small fraction of of, of contribution and yet it get like 50-50, 50%, 50% um, uh, uh, in terms of uh, profit. Okay, uh, The brother was like, I, I met his brother and he was like, I made a bloody mistake. Uh, um, if I knew that this comp- this business, you know, uh, can expand and we, the one that we are having right now, I won't I won't give 50 50 to my brother it should be like 20 80 70 30 you know so you have to have all these things before you start uh, so it's very tricky actually it it seems that it's much more easy because we are talking about family members right we are talking about friends we know them especially best best friends you know you you, you start uh, you know this guy from schooling from from college you know? but in reality, it's quite difficult. That's why a lot of companies, they go for, uh, they wanted to go for IPO, they want to go for public listed, uh, public listing is because of, they want to cut down all these things. When talking about, talking about uh, outsiders, okay, you know, it's much more easier to manage because feminists, they are a, a bit um, sentimental, okay, uh, with the business. Uh, even even like the one that we discussed just now, when talking about when you talk about um, but uh, selling your business, okay, a lot of them reluctant to do so because of the sentimental value. Oh, I, I, I start this business from scratch. You know, I have gone through all the hassle um, in order to build up this company. At the end, at one point, people wanted to buy my business. You know, like I think like this sentimental kind of feeling that you have with the business. But in reality, in real business. If someone offer you and when you, you know, and you think that it's worth to sell, you better sell. Because people only buy when they see your business going upward or making a lot of money or expanding. And they won't buy your business if your business is going down. Okay. So, um, you have, if you sell the business um, at the peak uh, stage phase of your business, you might get a lot of money, then maybe you can start all over again. That's what entrepreneur is all about. Okay, they will start all over again. Okay, with the maybe you can become an investor instead. Huh? Then you can you can just simply you know stay at home, wake up in the morning, playing golf, come back, have lunch, and then go meet your friends and everything. Uh, and you know, money is always coming in. Okay, it will be. Will that be nice to you, to all of us like that, right? Okay. So, so these are a few suggestion uh, on family. So, well, in this slide, I, I, I put it as a suggestion. But when it comes to uh, exam or quizzes, you need to, you know, 
uh, argue about this thing. You need to discuss about this thing. All right. Okay. Uh, this top five reasons startup businesses fail. Why I highlight this thing? Because of if you want to invest in any company, um, okay, you need to look at this at least this five reason. If you are satisfied with these five reason, okay, okay, then you can think about investing in that 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 business or in that company. Okay? The first one we are talking about startup capital. Most of these companies they have insufficient startup capital because you know it's it's normal. Okay? It's normal. Um according to the packing auditory, okay, people in entrepreneur they will try to use their own saving, they try to use their own social capital instead of of getting funding from uh com from the commercial bank for example. Okay. Um so when they don't have enough startup capital and they are very stubborn to go for uh, uh, finding. It's not stubborn actually, but because of you uh, afraid that you cannot meet up with the obligation, that is the reason why uh, you tend to shift to um, getting your own um, my own money, okay, own capital, okay, with less risk. Uh, with less trouble if you have any problems with the business. So because of that, you might not have enough uh, capital. Okay, um, You need to expand your business, but then you are afraid to get to commit it eh, with, with um, commercial or conventional financing. So it's, 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 it's quite... Um, um, normal, um, not just normal, but then is is this is one of the main reason, okay? One of the factors that contribute to the uh, uh, failing business. Uh, second is we talk about lack of managerial experience. We have few cases, we have few uh, living evidence to show that managerial experience is very important. Okay, there is reason why if you have a business, you're not supposed to spend your 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 revenue, your your income, yeah, like like nobody business. Okay, uh, of course it is your business, but then you need to be very disciplined. Um, you have to tell yourself that you are basically one of the workers. You are not the owner, so you will get your salary extra. Your salary is a fixed salary, fixed payment, okay, and the rest is basically for you to invest. Okay? One thing about doing business is, I mean, one advantage of doing business is that um, you can have a lot of tax assumption. Um, you know, you can buy a new car or maybe a buy as an investment or, or part of your business, but in reality, it's actually yours. Okay, so so this is how business people always do. Okay, so but still, uh, you need to have a uh, uh, management skills when it comes to, especially when you are all run the meaning to say you are the one who are going to look at the account, uh, doing the marketing and everything. So you need to have all this. Kind. If not, then you have to outsource. But then, um, when we talk about outsourcing, it means cost. Okay, so you need you will incur more uh, extra cost. Uh, location, bad location. Okay, this is quite. Some people think that um, you know, it's not as important as it, it seems. But then, locality is very important. It depends on your business, especially. Eh, um, it depends on your business. Okay, there are few types of business that you need to have around. Um customers okay or maybe a supplier maybe you know a few things i give you a good example okay there's one company uh i don't know whether i i mentioned about this thing or not this company indochine um is a is a is a is a factory producing biodegradable product um so basically he set up his own his company his factory 
inside the PTP, eh, Pelabuhan Tanjung Pelepas. Uh, the reason for him to set up uh, his business, okay, which is very difficult for people to go in because, you know, uh, every port just like just like airport, okay, um, seaport, um, you have to declare everything, you know, you, you it's, it's like you're going away for a holiday, you have to bring, uh, you you have to register whenever you want to enter the the uh, port area, okay, um, you know, just, it's, it's quite hassle, it's not just like, you can just simply, as a customer, you can just simply go there and then buy, you know, do some sightseeing, no, but uh, it's, it's, it's actually a restricted area. So it's quite difficult actually to do this, uh, I mean, to go uh, uh, to to visit this this particular business, this factory. Uh, this uh, company is uh, uh, Indochine. Okay. So, but, but their owner basically set up their factory, set up their, uh, their, their company inside the uh, PTP tab. Pelabuhan Tanjung Pelepas. Okay. Um, the reason is that he told us we were question about this thing. Okay. Why do you set up in this in this facility? The reason is that um, he's basically he he produced biodegradable product, product. So the raw material is is basically uh, from tapioca. Okay. Um, uh, ubi. Eh. Cassava. Okay, um, if uh, in in Europe they call it cassava, uh, in Malaysia we call it ubi. Uh, in other part of country, I think they call it tapioca. Okay, um, the reason is that uh, he will. Oh, this is this is an imported goods. Okay, he import this thing from from I mean bought from uh, and few other materials. Okay, it comes from from um, from outside. So if he pulls, if he open up outside the compound, the facilities, maybe just in front of the gate, okay, the cost of clearing the product from the port, which is not even like one kilometer far eh, from the the ship, the uh, tanker, okay, it will cost him about 1,800 to bring uh, in terms of logistic, you need to bring the product from the the ship to the company, which is just outside the gate of that PTP, it will cost him about one thousand eight. Whereby, if he set up in the facility, the cost of bringing that container, which is about half a kilometer, not even half a kilometer, okay, okay, uh, it will cost him only about three hundred ringgit. So the locality is quite important. Okay, in order for you to cut down case, the same goes to like any other businesses. Okay, I uh, last time if I'm not mistaken, we have we talk about uh, open up a, a car wash. Okay, a car wash. Uh, we are talking about this uh, lean model canvas. We're talking about this business model canvas. We're talking about this one, and this is want to see what can we do with this car wash. And it seems that a lot of them. Uh, yes, of course, they provide services. They wash your car, you know, they vacuum everything and you know, make your car nice, shining, everything. Um, but their main problem is when there is a raining season. Okay, when there's a raining season, there's no business actually. Okay, not many people will send their car to wash. Okay, so we have to think. That will be our main problem. So we have to think, uh, what can we do uh, in making sure that even it's raining, this particular car wash will still have business. They will still have cars to be washed, so that your your you don't have any idle um, uh, workers, you know, playing around, uh, playing with the phone, you know, singing and everything. So what we think is that this car wash should be open near to, um, if you have that place, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, a workshop area, okay? A lot of people open up a workshop, okay? A car workshop. It doesn't matter a car or, or a motorbike or maybe a lorry. Um, we should have a car wash there. And this will, you have to, Deal with the make a deal with the owner, with the workshop, with the mechanic, 
Okay, tell them that whenever they finish fixing any any customer's car, they can send their car to our uh, car wash. Okay, um, and then the charges will be included in in the customer's bill. Okay, and then at the same time, you will give some you know percentage to the mechanics. So, as far as mechanic is con- uh, business is concerned, I think it's a good. Uh, a good thing, okay, when customer came back, finish, pick up, pay everything, and they knew that their car is already been washed. It looks clean, you know. Hati pun happy, and you will feel happy. Even though you you uh, you already pay something, okay, but you're happy because your car looks clean, okay. So even if it's raining, this workshop can just simply send and to this car wash, it will wash and then give back to the mechanic. And when the customer came, maybe the mechanic just can simply say, oh, we clean up because it's raining. Then after that, uh, if, if it's not raining, you can just simply uh, wipe down a little bit and it's all clean, you know? So that is, the locality is very important, okay? Locality is very important. Poor inventory control, they don't have the ability to do all these things. All right? Uh, I will give you a good example. That day I went to um, wood fire. It's quite popular in JB right now, selling burgers. Well, actually, the burgers is just like um, is a is a, a, a hum, uh, what call it? Uh, uh, is it, 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 it's like a special burgers with with special cheese and everything, and the way they put it, which is really nice but it's not healthy okay to be fair it's not healthy even though they make the the beef patty okay by themselves but then they put everything inside there so you know um it's really tempting for you guys okay for us we have i have that uh burgers and uh, i told myself that i'm not gonna have any meat any burgers for for a duration of a week actually at, at least a week okay because the burger so big it's just like fuel shack it's just like uh carl's jr you know it's not like like mcdonald's burgers okay uh, look very lame but this one is really tempting really nice okay so i've been to i went to this place for a couple of times actually for more than two times i uh, know uh, the first two times i went there um the owner said it's finished already okay Hello, you are doing a business. You you shouldn't say that. You need to make sure that the burgers is there. Okay, meaning uh, it's, it's a bad impression to customers if you told them that oh, uh, our burgers finished already. You cannot say that. You are doing a business. Okay, so you need to have a very proper inventory control, making sure that your business runs smoothly because of there's a stigma in terms of business there's a stigma in in customers you did something wrong okay or maybe uh if you cook too dry or or you know it, it's tasteless it's, it's salty you know that thing. they have a customers have stigma i mean they have a stigma is it's quite difficult for them to come back and 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 try again okay uh, um, it will take a longer period of time before these people come back. And they were hoping that they only came when you know that, oh, this is under new management. Okay, maybe the food is not going to be as bad as like the previous management. You know, yeah. So in terms of inventory control, you need to have a very good uh, knowledge and, and uh, uh, experience in doing this okay, to make sure that uh, your business runs smooth. Imagine if you go to, let's say, McDonald's, okay, there's no burgers, there's only chicken. There's only uh, fried chicken, okay, uh, this, um, uh, and then only uh, French fries. There's no burgers. How do you feel? Uh, you, you get really, really mad, okay? So inventory should be uh, in place. Uh, lack of initial planning. It's just like an ad hoc kind of attitude. Okay. Yes, of course, we, we, I don't deny that most of the business um been set up because of you, you can see an opportunity there. Okay, um, you, you can see what they call it as niche market uh, is uh, or underserved market. So you try to, you know, fill up the gaps uh, by introducing, by selling, providing these services and, you know, uh, whatnot. 
but still okay a lot of them is basically they just simply do and you can see that some of them they don't have some in, in terms of paper qualification and something that uh, unless unless you 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 go for uh, trainings you know uh, Skilling and upskilling, okay. Um, a lot of money has been poured in. Um, a lot of budgets have been allocated for this, uh, this skilling and upskilling. But it's more on, uh, you know, uh, uh, action plan to overcome this uh, current problem that we are facing right now. Uh, but when it comes to initial planning, in what, how. When you know all this, what let's say, I mean, some people they don't think about this thing, okay? And 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 we got to understand that our capital is very limited, okay? We don't have uh, what it takes to you know simply burn our money just like that. Yeah, I have a friend who uh, talk about burgers as well. Um, he he spent about two hundred thousand, okay, to come up with. I don't know what they call. It. I've seen it before, but then I cannot. Uh, they call it as burger arang. No, uh, that, that that the bun itself is is black in color. Okay, he opened up the company. You remember this this restaurant in Damansara, if I'm not mistaken, long time ago. Okay, after one one year, one and a half years, if I'm not mistaken, then they they closed down the business, you know. And when I came and met him, it was like, ah, kuni bodoh sangat lah jual burger pun tak laku. But he lost about two hundred thousand. I said, okay, but then, but but this this guy, um, basically he got a lot of money. Okay, um, he has a lot of business. So it was like, you know, we were laughing about it. And then, uh, okay, okay, we start over again. The last time I heard, um, I I lost contact actually with him. Okay, last time I heard, I I call him. He was in Thailand, playing golf, while life. Okay, and then was like asking him, "What kind of business are you doing right now?" They check up. Um, they bought business. How should I say? Uh, their new business is their service radar kapal laut tentera Perancis. I was like, "How in the hell do you get that kind of business?" Okay, you're basically servicing a uh, uh, Royal Navy. No, no, say a uh, French Navy fleet uh, servicing the radar. Um, so I, I don't know how he get that that business. Okay, he's very good. Okay, he, um, hopefully he'll be back in Malaysia, and then maybe I can talk to him, and then maybe we can think of something else. Uh, think about doing some some business together. Okay, so all right, so those are five top five reasons startup business uh, uh, feel. And also other things, ah, okay, buying existing in terms of uh, you're trying to make a decision whether you want to buy a new businesses. Okay, we don't talk about the valuation yet. Okay, we're talking about the overall. Okay, uh, what you need to look at when you need to understand when it comes to buying, um, you know, doing business. If let's say you're going to buy a family business, for example, ah, uh, then you know it's a combination of the, all these things that you need to look as an investor. You need to look into all these things. Try to scrutinize. Try to uh, we 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 talk about this due diligence. Yes, of course. Okay, um, it is all included. Um, looking at the financial matters of the business. Okay, but on top of that, we need to look at all this intangible kind of uh, soft valuation. Okay, in order to make sure that our investment will not turn sour. Okay, at least we can make money. And then because if it's your own money, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it's up to you. But then when it comes to other people, you are answerable to it. Okay. All right, guys. Anything? Anything else that you want to ask about this thing? Anything? Kita ada beberapa orang ni. Uh, oh yes, I wanted to have this. Any question? Kes mau tidur lagi ni? How many people we have? Eh? Why is it? Uh, we have. Twenty, right? 
let me oh, sorry why is it i open up my photos any question tidur lagi ke are you still sleeping no <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. Okay, uh, just take the attendance. Ini apa subjek financing kan? Financing, uh, technology financing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, right. B. Okay, guys. Three zero three three. Three zero three three. Yes. Ah, uh, eh, one moment. Uh, share this thing. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me uh, give uh, um, and she always have selalu dia orang ni tak dapat uh, sign in. This is for SHAD 3033, okay? Those who register under SBSD 3033, wait. Give me one, give, give, give friend your friends two minutes siapa yang register ah yes ah, okay okay good it's done uh, okay guys the rest of you sign in so how's the okay uh, any question in uh, attendance why is it Oh, okay. Any anything that you want to discuss about the assignment? We're gonna have a test, right? Uh, maybe last few, uh, um, uh, maybe second last week of the semester, maybe we're gonna have a test. Um, but my other student, my other class, uh, is a part-time students. They wanted to have instead of test, they 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 ask for assignment. So I haven't decided yet, uh, but I think you guys we can go with a uh, test, uh, and we should go with um, short test. And it's a it's a home uh, take home test, you know, open book test and and discussion among you test kind of thing. Ada lagi? Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, any any question? Ada apa apa yang nak ditanya? Doctor, yang tu case study. Okay. Uh -huh. Actually, what exactly we need to do about okay. that assignment? Okay, alright, alright. Okay. Apa case study saya bagi? I can't remember. <laughs> about what? Huh? The robot. Oh, yeah. Ganker robot. Oh, really really nice, I think. Hmm. Tapi tak jual kat Malaysia lah. Eh, I think it's about 1,000 something per robot. Uh, sell in 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 US. If you look at YouTube, okay, you you know just uh, go and see this gang robot. And for the boys, I think is 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 nice. Uh. I mean, uh, memang best uh, Okay. Anyway, all right. Uh, so first thing first uh, is a is a group project. Okay. Uh, we have twenty two student plus two twenty. We have twenty four. So that means. We can have like four percent per group. That Did means form new group or follow back the previous assignment group. Mm, what do you think? What What do you guys um suggest? New team, maybe I think better for me. I think it's better to have a new team so that you can get new ideas, you know, or maybe you have some ex bad experience working with. With the with the team uh, on on the first assignment, maybe it is a uh, this is the chance for you to have a new guy. You know, I don't know. It's up to you guys. Uh, uh, ni? Christopher previous team. Okay, eh, this attendance done. Eh, complete. Eh, finish. Eh, uh, ada lagi ke? Okay. Um. So so. We still have people coming in. Stop. Okay. So um, it's it's uh it's up to you. Uh, it's up to you guys. Um, whether you want to have a new team, 
or previous team i leave it to you guys or you want you want us to make a decision today right now it's going to be a new team or previous team uh tak ramai datang ini hmm what do you think previous team okay ni kita tengok previous team previous team maybe you have already the chemistry all right yes yes no question doctor oh anisa bagus tak ada question doctor doctor okay no no doctor okay previous team previous team okay then we go with previous team is it okay hazel boleh all right okay you have agree okay what Basically, I want you to do is that is 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 some sort. Okay, a simple question that I ask inside that assignment is that: Are you going to invest in this company? They are going to expand. They are going to you know include more weapons and they want to design more weapons, and more system, and you know, maybe they have some laser pointed um um thing inside that robot and everything okay so if you are an investor are you going to invest in this thing that will be the question it's simple as that so with all the knowledge that you have with all the slide that we, we i have already given to you guys okay, maybe you can go through all this thing and try to use as much as possible in terms of information um to come up with We have a decision whether you are going to invest in this in this in this particular project or not. So we're talking about toys here, okay? It's not necessarily is it's not going to be like you know a biotech product, nanotechnology product, you know cosmetic life sciences product, microbiome. You know, no, it, we're talking about a simple thing. Is a is a is a is a toy uh, mm-hmm. project, okay? So. What kind of information that you're looking for? Okay, these are the things that I want to have. I want to know. Okay, say so, okay, we're going to invest in, but okay, we're not going to invest. We're going to invest, or uh, these are our argument whether we want to invest or not. It try to make as such that you are going to present this to your investors. What kind of information that you're looking for? Then maybe you can ask later on in the real world. Basically, this thing happens like this. When we have this kind of businesses, okay, we're going to gather a lot of information about the company. That's the most important, right? Okay, and then the thing that you need to do is that at the end of the day, you're going to present this thing to the investors. I say, okay, we have this project, okay, this guy, basically this company, basically producing this kind of toys, this you know high tech product, uh, gadget. The market, uh, uh, what call it, um, the the. How big is the market? What kind of product? Yeah. So what? What? What money? What kind of business? Uh, how many? Uh, sorry. Uh, how are they doing right now? Their profit, everything. You have to tell everything to the investor so that you can get money from the investor and then you can, you know, um, and, and invest in this company. So, in order for you to come up with that presentation, or maybe a decision, okay, in terms of putting your money in, in what kind of information are you looking for? So these are maybe you can put, maybe you can list down things or argue, discuss things that you need from the company. Okay, in the real world, basically, I will call this company and say, okay, I need to know about this information, this, 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 everything. Okay, then from there you analyze everything. You analyze. So let me, let me. I can remember. Oh, stop. Let me have a look at this. Uh, Uh, case study. So our answer can be in presentation, but we discuss and argue about why we want to invest or why not, lah. Exactly. Okay. What we need and what you get, your impact, our promise. So they say we need the minimum fifty thousand to successfully produce the gang kaku robot. Your fund will be used to produce more purchase material assembly robot. In return, you receive the newest model. Okay, it's more like a crowdfunding actually. Okay, it's more like a crowdfunding where okay you give us money and then we give you this. You know, some some crowd crowdfunding. Um, some companies they said if you give me uh, this amount of money, you will get um this uh, product. Okay, the, your your product, you know that kind of thing. So basically, the, 
So, yeah, startup company comprise young people who are passionate about robotic. Without your help, we can build. We also need funding to host robot combat event. If you feel of our passion, then join us in creating the world best robot warriors. So, yes, are you going to give that fifty thousand to them or not? The bottom line is there. So, the in terms of okay, I actually suggest to have a report. Okay, I mean a written report the reason why okay what kind of information that you need to have you're looking for maybe you can you know uh, do some a little bit of course definitely you need to do some homework you need to do some research on this particular product this particular company okay and then um, I want you to present okay do some presentation it's a very simple presentation okay um, so at least at least we have something for the, the semester okay um, try to convince us you are trying to convince us um, whether we should put $50,000 to this company or not. Okay. So, but, so, is it okay with that? Yeah. So, uh, the, is there any minimum page for our... No. 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 In my, in other lectures class, yes. But for my class, there's no holes but. Okay. Everything okay. under the sky, okay. whatever you want to do, make it as creative as possible. It doesn't matter. I am very happy. Okay, I want to see your creativity. Uh, there's no guideline, no nothing, no format, no. I mean, uh, you know, do try to the best that you can in terms of convincing these people. Um, I think I think we can we can one thing that I um I need to clarify is that. You need to clarify is that whether you are basically uh, the investors. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Okay, it's okay. No, 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 it's right. I think it's just that, okay, now this company is asking money from you. Okay? You are basically the investors. So the question will be a big question that you have to put in front is, are you going to give this 50000 to the company or not? Why? If yes, why? If no, why? All right? Okay? You might have your... Discuss among your team. Okay? You might have your own reason. You might have your own, uh, you know, criteria, factors, whatsoever. Or it, you need some information, actually, which is something that you can you can put in your report that, okay, we're going to invest this, but then we need to know this. We don't have this information. We need to know this. And then look at whether the company is able to um, uh, um, uh, sustain, okay? Uh, they are talking about having um, uh, in combat, uh, this robot war combat event, blah. Um, so maybe you might have some other ideas that you want to, you know, to, to, to highlight to this company that make it interesting. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, doctor, when is the submission date? When you want to submit? Ah, ini siapa yang tanya ni? Hazel eh? Hazel, have you been to? Three weeks later. Uh, Hazel, have you? Oh, siapa apa dia tadi? Siapa yang kata tadi? Hazel, have you been in my class before? Yes. Yeah, pernah. Two years ago. Pernah. Masa financial management, is it? Ah. Uh -huh. Oh. Because normally, if student ask me, bila you did, I will ask the student, when can you submit? Because I know you guys are very busy. You are the most busy person yeah. in the world. So you have a lot of this, you know, especially. Sekarang ni nak say baik, just because I know it's MCO, uh, all this. If not, uh, well, you guys are lebih busy daripada menteri besar. You know, uh, you, uh, you have to, you know, I have, I this weekend we have to go uh, to watch movie and then after that we we have to go for uh go kart uh racing and then you know, I have some assignment here I have to I have date here so you guys are very busy so that's why instead of I put the date I will ask the student when are you going to submit based on your um busy schedule okay uh, so it's up to you guys week fourteen uh week fourteen dah habis sangat okay so when I so okay. Week 14 means week 14, the last week too, you can uh, um, present sekali lah. Is that it? 
Okay, so during week 14, week 13, week 14, I think we got almost finish our 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 subject, you know. We almost finish our subject. Okay, I try to do it as quickly as possible so that few weeks you have, you can relax. You know? you don't, you're not going to have a class at 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, we try our level best to finish up, to rush a little bit. Okay, by right, uh, some of the lectures pun I dengar pun ada yang dah habis dah because they have class at like night and morning and night, you know. They try to rush things out. Um, so, yeah, it's okay. Uh, if everybody okay with week 14 to sub, uh, is a submission date, it's okay. I got no problem. But that means on the week 14, you uh, uh, submit and then we're going to have a very short uh, presentation. Uh, it's just for the sake of this faculty, you know. Now they they look into all this. Oh, student can participate. Like right now lah. Nobody switch on camera, semua, semua senyap, so takut semua tidur. Uh, so, they they want it to be uh, interactive. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Itu semua makcik-makcik ini lah, punya pemikiran. For me, I don't care. As long as I deliver, I have evidence that you come into my class and cukup. Kan? Okay? So, on the week 14, okay, nak submit week 14? Alright? Boleh? Eh, week 14 eh? Alright. Okay, so, apa ni... Then, uh, on the week 14, tapi tak boleh awal sikit ke? Awal sikit, then, then kita dah tak payah buat apa-apa lagi. Just, you know, I I suspect apa, bila week 14 nanti, masih ada lagi yang tengah buat. There's still someone still doing it. Whereby, that time, I think it's crucial for you to study for your exam lah, final exam lah, maybe a lot of submission. Ah, okay, week 13 pula, dia kurangkan satu minggu je. Oh my God. Okay, I, I got no problem. So, gini-gini lah, gini. Maybe you can decide, uh, discuss among yourself bila nak hantar. For me, it's okay. I don't have final exam. I buat soalan saja. I'm not the one going to study. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Alright? So, you guys are the one. Okay, so, so you discuss among yourself. Okay? Among your team. Kalau nak submit awal, cuma satu je. Oh, that, but only one. Uh, one thing um, that I, I really need your help. Um, I need some, only one person who send all the assignment. Okay? I don't want... Um, every group send an email to me. Uh, so, it's very difficult for me to monitor. Okay? So, um, maybe someone uh, can volunteer to become ketua. Eh? So, everyone will send to him and he is the only one who can send uh, send send to me. Ataupun, uh, email tak ada pun tak apa. Just see, uh, send it in, in WhatsApp group also okay. But then, I want it to be like one email, you know, rather than send to me separated. So, kalau 6 tak berapa sangat lah. Tapi kalau ada 22 student hantar 22 email, ayo. Siap lah. Okay? Alright? So, that one you discuss among yourself lah. Okay? We oh, we are week 7, 8 right now, kan? Okay? Hopefully by 10, well, 10, 11 kita finish so that everybody can relax. Um, Uh, so, up to you guys, uh, bila nak hantar, okay, make sure you hantar je lah. Eh? And then, uh, one hantar tu maybe week 13, 14, can okay, you insist to have class, can have some, we have a very short, we can have short presentation so that I can take video and 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 show to the faculty, oh, just the evidence, you see my student, they are very uh, active and, and, and dynamic and progressive, you know, they participate. That kind of thing. All right. Okay. So, that is that. Anything else? Ada apa-apa lagi? Eh, assignment yang satu tu dah hantar dah? The first assignment. Uh, dah belum? Sudah. Sudah, eh? Huh? Sudah, sudah. Sudah. Okay. All right. Okay, anything else? No? Uh, no. All right. Okay, guys. I'll see. Okay, so kita punya kelas hari apa lagi satu? Hari Rabu eh? Hari oh, Rabu, alright. Okay, we try to rush things out. Alright, okay. So, take care, take care. Alright, adios. Bye. Thank you, doctor. Bye-bye. Thanks.